Market update here on the 20th. Haven't been doing very many updates because uh, the market has been doing absolutely nothing. And so my video that was on Sunday was still valid. There's not really any point in even making a video. So I really only want to make videos when there's a move that's substantial. Today, um, not really a substantial move, but we had some individual stocks such as Tesla made a big move. So I thought I'd make a video. So uh, looking at SPY first, though, nothing's changed on SPY. We filled a upside gap here on the 2nd of February. We we're not able to break it. Same with QQQ. And we're coming down. Um, like I talked about in the video on Sunday, I think this is one, two, three, four, five. And I think that we need to pull back to at least 397. Um, this is a gap fill right here. There's a gap right here, a small gap at 404 and at 401. But um, I think we need to come back down here to 397 into this demand zone before we can go higher. But we'll see. We'll see if we can get down that far. That would be a that would be about a 4% drop. That's not really that big of a deal. So 4% drop maybe and then go higher. And if you want to see my upside targets, you can just watch my video on Sunday. I talked about where I think we're going to go on the upside. But not much else to say it's in a supply zone and uh, I'm looking for a move down to 397 QQQ what is there to say about this one um, if you go down to the one hour time frame and just look at this you can try your best with any type of charting technique to figure out what this is this is my best guess right here but I think that it is could be just ABC, the start of ABC right here. Pull back, C wave down to here, pull back, and then get another move down. My target is 297. We'll see if that ends up being too steep, but that's a 0.38 fib. That's why it's my target. And yeah, so we'll see what happens with QQQ, but very choppy for now. Almost three weeks of this chop back and forth. But I still think that overall, if this is a diagonal, we need to come back here to the 0.38 fib. So hit supply, 0.38 fib at 295. So it's possible it goes to two point, the 0.23 fib at 305, 306 and goes higher. But I don't know. That just seems like it's too shallow for this move. I think 0.38 fib makes more sense. Um, especially when you're thinking about targets to the upside. 0.38 Fib is 295, bottom 253, that's 42 points. 360 is right in this demand zone. So I think 295 is not a um, extreme target at all. What is that like? That's only like a 5% pullback as well. So I think 295 should hit, and on SPY we should see 397. So now getting into the one that everyone was talking about today, Tesla. So you remember I talked about in past videos, we have a gap fill. And I've had this marked here for a long time now at 146. Talked about in the last video, I wasn't sure, but I thought it would come down here and probably double bottom. Well, we came down here and actually hit lower than that at 160. And there is a demand zone that it hit perfectly. I think this is a two hour demand zone at 160 and bounced off of it. Where are we in this chart though? I think this is a WXY move. So we have W here. We got X here. And so we know if it's WX, because this is ABC right here, this is ABC right here, we know for a fact that this cannot go past 132, 133. That's the max it can go. That is in weekly demand as well. It just happens to be with a demand zone right there, you can see pretty clearly. But getting into this move on smaller time frames, you have WX. And then we have a five wave move, it looks like to me. So. 
originally I thought this was an a, a wave right here or a w wave but if you go down to like the 15 minute time frame you can see we have this little wick right here so you get one two three four and five that's the first wave we get a b c second wave pulls back i think to the 0.5 fib let's see not quite so doesn't quite get to the 0.5 fib unless i use the bottom of this it really does but i think this is a b wave right here so it's either one two or it's a b but if we look at where this third wave has gone it's gotten past the 1.61 fib and if we zoom out here a little bit farther my count on this is one two one two uh three four five three uh, let me go down to lower time frames so one two three four five three so I'm looking for a bounce here, and I think that we would just be completing the overall either third wave or C wave. We can go ahead and figure it out right now. Let's see. So we bounced to 167. then that would take us all the way down to 151 to 147 and that's close enough to filling the gap that is probably going to end up being ABC and another way you can look at this I can tell you if it's ABC or not are parallel lines and you can see that clearly we have not gotten outside the parallel line so this is actually probably ABC unless we keep on going down tomorrow and get outside of here. I think this is ABC. And so I would look for, uh, let's see here. So one, one indicator is saying ABC, the other one is saying five wave move. But even if this is the third wave right here and it goes down to one, say it goes down to 150, and that's a third wave only from what I count let's say it hits this demand zone right here we'd probably bounce to like 160 and then we can get a idea and that would fill the gap and get close to the weekly demand so I would just say this is probably most likely an extended C wave, so ABC, um, or my count is off and this is the end of a third wave, but you can't really see on this smaller time frame. So either way, I think the gap will get filled here at 146, and that is daily demand. Remains to be seen if we get down to weekly demand, but remember it cannot get past 133. So if I had to guess on this, I would just say we're probably going to do something like that. Probably into like mid-May. So maybe a little bit more downside tomorrow and then a bounce next week and then go down farther. So that means we still have another 10 to 15% sell off or so. And then if you look at the upside, it's still possible we can get all the way up to its target of 268, but maybe short of that around 255. So Tesla was a very good short from 207. So congrats if you hit that. Apple, my best guess on this one, I don't know if I went over this in the last video. I think this could be an expanded triangle. Makes the most sense to me for where I think the market's going to go. So expanded triangle just means um, something like this. Let me draw the parallel lines. So you can see how it gets lower here 
and it gets higher here. These are all ABC patterns. That would just mean that this is actually A. We'd pull back for B and we just go higher. Um, on this area right here, we hit, we basically hit the top of this parallel line right here. So that's why I'm expecting a correction, but then I'm expecting it to expand um, potentially out to probably like 190-ish, a little bit higher than the all-time high. And then I would expect it to go down one more time to probably 120-ish or so. But it could be even farther down than that if this bottoms in 2024. So there's my thoughts on SPY, I think, or on Apple. I think we're in a triangle most likely. But that's just a random guess based on this on this um, formation. Microsoft, I still think this topped out 0.38 fib at 263, chopping around right now. If it does go higher, we still have the supply zone at 296. Meta should have topped out by now. Um, this is a first wave right here, or an A wave, which could be an A wave. We're looking for a pullback to a minimum of 201 but more than likely all the way down here to 186, which would be about a little bit over a 10% drop. So I'm looking at that as either A, B, C, or, and let's see, the, where, where is this gonna go to? We're looking at about 277. So yeah, I have to refresh my memory on this one. Yeah, so I would say a five wave move, but it looks like we're gonna start a second wave or have already started a second wave. Look for a minimum of 195. NVIDIA probably topped out just like all the rest of them, but uh, it's not 100% yet. On this one, again, I went over in the video, it already pulled back to the 0.61 FIB long term. So it's hard for me to think this is gonna go any lower, it could. But again, just like all the other rest of them, it's probably gonna do something like this. And that could even be, or it could pull back farther for a second wave as well. Just remains to be seen. The VIX. If you charted this one out, we hit a long-term trend line going back to 2017. We went a little bit past it. We bounced today. So really it's just watching and see if we continue this bounce. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we just chop back and forth until next week now. Think, considering we have all of the major earnings except for Apple next week. So we could chop around until that happens and then sell off, but it is uh, pretty encouraging that we hit this long-term trend line for a bounce. I would hope to get to at least probably the mid 20s, I would say, um, in order for us to get down 5% or so. I think we're probably gonna have to get up to the mid 20s. And the dollar, last thing, um, dollar is looking to bounce, I think but it could be a pretty shallow bounce. I wouldn't be surprised if we just come up here and double top again here at 106 on this drop. But I think that this move should be finished. We double bottomed, maybe we'll double top up here. Uh, Bitcoin, last thing I'll go over. So Bitcoin is falling. I actually sold mine right around this area. I think 30,200. I was just trading it from when I bought back in November. And I got lucky, I was thinking in my head, there's, pro there's a chance it can go to 32, 33,000. But it was in a supply zone, a weekly supply zone. That's kind of why I sold it. So I was kind of using that as over Elliott wave. And if you look, we have five waves. We have one, two, three, four. This is kind of sketchy. But you can still see, it looks like it could be five waves. One, two. Uh, it doesn't really, 
it looks like it could be actually like an expanded flat maybe as well but at this point we've already sold off and we're in a supply zone just considering it pretty much done with um, a five wave move but again it came really close to hitting my target also 31,400 that I originally had and that was the 1.61 fib of this right here so there's also a chance that my count is off and this is actually only ABC either way it doesn't really matter that much but let's zoom in here a little bit farther could be ABC as well could be an expanded flat Either way, if it pulls back here and gets out of the supply zone, there is a demand zone here at 25,000 and then also 23,000 down here to 19,000. Uh, I'm looking for a minimum pullback of again, 25,100 to a max of 19,084. So that's pretty much all the updates for today. Um, expect some more chop potentially tomorrow and then i would also we have you know opex or monthly opex as well so there's probably going to be some chop i don't expect a huge sell-off i wouldn't be surprised there's a bounce tomorrow to kill some options but then next week i would start to look for more downside and into may i'm expecting a pretty big move so we'll see if i end up being right or not if it goes higher from here it's still not a setup that i want to be buying calls or buying these names because we're we got supply zones all around here on qqq on spy as well but um if spy were to get over 420 then the next spot of interest for me is probably up here around well i guess we got this right here at 426 from august and actually, this is a four hour zone. I would say over 421.75 and then the top of August. Above that, we're looking all the way up here at 430 to 443. So that's the update for today. Uh, maybe chop tomorrow and then next week I'm expecting more downside. But hopefully everyone got in on that Tesla short and made some money. I know it's a hard market to trade right now. Um, what I've been doing is, again, I sell puts and then I use that money to buy my puts. So if I'm wrong, then I'm still going to end up making money because my puts are going to cover, my sold puts are going to cover my put position. So that's the way I've been doing it in this market with the zero date to expiration options because if you just buy puts, if you're trying to trade options in this market and it just chops back and forth all day, you're not only going to lose premium. But then if it breaks the wrong way, you're going to get stopped out and lose money. This way, I can just hold my puts for whatever way I think it's going to go. And if I'm wrong, I still make money because I have my sold puts. So the only risk with this is if it goes way, way down. But then that just comes down to knowing where you're at in the chart. And I know where I'm at in the chart. So I can sell my puts actually lower than the ones I buy. So really that's what I've been doing and it's not really that complicated of a strategy, but it takes a lot of stress off of you. So if you're listening to this, that's a pretty good strategy. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Leave me a comment. Make sure you like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.